by Daryl Ashford Smith, who's going to talk to us a bit about um, Technical Rescue International and how they use drones, and how most recently they um, successfully delivered a drone donated by us at EDC um, to Nepal uh, Mountain Rescue Team, um, and sort of it will be used at Everest Base Camp this coming summer. So that's very exciting. So let's talk to Daryl and then um, find out a bit more. So, do you want to start off just by telling us a bit about Technical Rescue International and how you started to use drones um, for this line of work? Uh, yeah, so Technical Rescue International, as the name applies, uh, we deliver uh, technical rescue training uh, all over the world. Uh, technical rescue meaning uh, rope rescue, water rescue, urban search and rescue. Um, and with that, we've now uh, started to apply drones to those different disciplines. So how important or how beneficial do you think drones can be to emergency services? I think they are becoming absolutely vital in the uh, safe system of work in protecting emergency services workers. Um, the way we use them are, uh, it is still in its inf uh, infancy and we've still a lot to develop and learn. Uh, however, uh, by putting a drone into a situation where we wouldn't want to send perhaps a firefighter, for example, um, it's just going to save lives. So you recently delivered drones and training to organisations out in Nepal. Are you able to tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Uh, so with uh, Technical Rescue International, um, I was part of a capacity building team. Uh, so our initial uh, stage of work was a water rescue course, right. um, uh, delivering uh, level three water and flood training. Okay. Uh, while we were doing that course, we took the opportunity to um, do a bit of research and development on how drones can be used for water rescue. Of course. Uh, and again, just a uh, absolutely vital tool in um, managing risk uh, to swift water responders, um, rather than send uh, perhaps a team over a river uh, that's in full flow to go and search an area, we can just send a drone. Uh, so that was the first um, area of work. So uh, the second two areas of work uh, were drone search and rescue training. So the first was to the Himalayan Rescue Association. Uh, so they have the responsibility for uh, setting up Everest Base Camp um, and they also have the Everest Mountain Guides working within their teams. Uh, so obviously that has natural applications uh, in that environment. Um, and the third bit of work was with the National Disaster Management Agency. Uh, so I attended the earthquake in 2015 and could already see then that uh, drones would have been uh, an absolute uh, vital tool uh, in assessing uh, that uh, earthquake uh, before we even arrived. Yeah. Uh, so with our capacity building project, um, we are uh, hopefully giving them a start um, so they can carry out the training, carry out operations and um, uh, hold vital information uh, for incidents that happen uh, in Nepal, uh, yes. such as another earthquake. Uh -huh. um, okay, so the uh, the drone that Edinburgh Edinburgh Drone Company provided um, uh, will be stationed at Everest Base Camp, um, which we were really happy to find out while we we're over there. Yeah. Uh, so when they set the base camp up each summer, uh, the drone will be stationed uh, at base camp um, in order for those that carry out search and rescue in that area. Um, uh, to use. So uh, amazing news. Yeah, it's amazing. And thank you for the lovely plaque that you brought back with you. <laughs> uh, well, it's only fitting that if you have something like the first drone in Everest Base Camp, that that should be remembered somehow. <laughs> so, uh, no, great. Couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better gift, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, your future plans to visit more countries and help them develop in terms of using drones to save lives. Can you uh, expand on this a bit more and what your plans are for the future? Sure. Um, already from doing our training in Nepal, we've uh, learnt a tr tremendous amount. Um, we're building on what we've researched and developed already. Um, and because of the ne uh, Nepal trip, we um, uh, have had uh, other people showing interest in what we're doing. Right. Um, so we have structured uh, courses on search and rescue um, in, in different areas. So uh, the predominant areas are external search and rescue, such as in rural and mountainous environments. Sure. 
um, but more prom uh, prominently for us as we are working in develop developing countries that are um, uh, due uh, disasters. Um, it's more the urban search and rescue side of work. So searching, um, uh, assessing and searching um, urban environments that have been subject to earthquakes, landslides, etc. Yep. Uh, and that means searching uh, externally as well as inside. Right. Um, and what I mean by inside, if there's a dangerous structure. Uh, we can now send a drone in to search that structure um, uh, to an extent rather than send personnel in. Yes. So again, um, uh, mitigating the risk to some extent. So obviously drones have been around for a while now. And what is the difference between piloting a drone commercially compared to when you're using it in an emergency services circumstance? Yeah, so there is a lot to think about. Um, there has to remain an aspect of control. Um, it is an emergency situation, so the pilot does have to be aware of that, be aware of how they're flying. The important thing for us is uh, the system of work that we teach uh, is a safe system. So ordinarily, uh, the pilot would fly the drone and they would have an observer carrying out the search, whether that be uh, whether that's from uh, looking through a pair of um, uh, sensors, the goggles, sure. uh, or, or another screen. It just allows a pilot to uh, fly their drone safely uh, and someone else to do the actual searching. Yep. The procedures that we've developed are from existing physical search procedures, right. uh, whether that be from uh, searching a, a rural or mountainous environment or searching in an urban search and rescue environment, such as a collapsed structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we keep all of our procedures uh, quite simple, um, but they are effective and they are thorough and it relies on the pilots and the observers following uh, the procedure, um, which in turn should give them success. Okay, thank you so much for talking to us, Daryl. It's been really interesting and um, we wish you luck with future endeavours and hope to hear more in the future. It's a pleasure. Great to work with you. Cheers. Okay, magic. <sighs> yeah, it's all right once it's done. <laughs> <laughs>